Good evening, Seth Highwind here, as this is my very, very late Sage recap. Sage is Sonic Amateur Gaming Expo, in which I downloaded every single Sonic fan game that was available onto the site to play a tryout so I could show y'all exactly what Sage had to offer this year, as well to give y'all an idea of what fan games you should definitely keep your eyes on. I wasn't expecting, however, that through the course of this happening, that I would have very little time to record very little time to really do much, and my computer more or less turning into a brick thanks to the amazingness that is Windows 10 Anniversary Update. Yeah, thank you, Windows. Thank you for turning my computer into a giant brick. Now, I did download every fan game except for the ones in dealing with Sonic EXE. I am not a creepypasta fan, I've never really been into the little creepypasta scene, so I just didn't feel right covering those games, knowing full well that I would probably be very biased against them. So if you're a fan of creepypasta stuff, hey, check out the Sonic EXE, but it's just not a thing for me. Unfortunately, when I was trying to go through and record stuff, I was unable to record Sonic Gather Battle, Sonic CD Breakout, and Sonic World Release 7. I don't exactly know what happened, but these games were unfortunately beyond my ability to record. Uh, probably something to do with the programs, just not syncing up right, wanting to go to special places, or just not wanting to boot up at all. So, first and foremost, for Sonic Gather Battle, uh, it was a very interesting game. Um, I'm a huge fan of the original um, Sonic Battle on the Game Boy Advance. As a matter of fact, it's probably one of my favorite Sonic spin offs we've had in a while. Um, so it was really kind of cool seeing that again. Uh, there were game modes where it's more or less, it felt almost kind of like a good old-fashioned arcade brawler type. Um, but in the realms of Sonic Battle type related games, there's another one on this list that I feel like completely blows out of the water. Uh, very good attempt. I would definitely recommend checking it out. Sonic CD Breakout. I don't understand. I really don't know what's going on. And I am a fan of breakout type games. Um, as a matter of fact, when I downloaded, I was kind of expecting a Sonic CD take of Arkanoid. And what I got instead, I just had no idea what was going on. Sonic's ball was so tiny, I couldn't see him. Stage, the stage of Palm Tree Panic was so cluttered, I had no idea what the hell was going on. Uh, so after about a couple of attempts playing it originally, I just kind of gave up. Uh, Last but not least, Sonic World Release 7. This is probably one of the longest-running 3D Sonic fan games uh, that uses its own engine. It's unique. I want to say it probably came out shortly after Sonic Robo Battle, which is a Sonic 2 game using the Doom, a Sonic game using the Doom engine. Uh, But they are definitely some of the longest-running 3D games, and it sucks that. Typically, to play these type of games, it's usually gamepad is required, and Sonic World Release 7 has the ability to use gamepads. For some unknown reason, I could not get my PS4 controller to sync up properly, resulting in headaches and a camera that just didn't work. When I finally did get to play it, it was a little hard. There are so many buttons that you can map for different attacks that just trying to remember the location of all of them on top of making sure you allocate You know, which ones you want for jumping, which one do you want for spin dash, what do you want for peel out, controlling the camera at the same time with the mouse. It was a little bit too cluster to me, and it sucks. There is a lot of love and dedication to R7, and there is a lot of good modding community out there for Sonic Worlds. Hopefully people have better luck than I do, because it is definitely a 3D game to check out. But now that we talked about the games I couldn't play, let's finally jump in and talk about the ones I was able to play. So, starting off first on our list, we have Classic Sonic 3D Adventure. It's a, uh, solid attempt at a 3D Sonic game. Um, odd choice of using Blender as the primary game engine when we have a more available right of the Unreal and the Sonic engine created for it, uh, GDK. Um, it's... It's interesting, to say the least. The controls are slippery unfortunately so to the point in which I had issues of not being able to really keep my footing every single time I would jump 
I would unfortunately continue moving even when I tried stopping. Uh, trying to do position platforming was a bit of a hassle. Now, I will give credit where credit is due. The guy has done a very impressive job with this game, and I really hope he continues to put it, but it still comes down to the fact trying to do a 3D Sonic fan game is hard. There's only been real, there's really only two examples I can think of off the top of my head that have really nailed the feel of a 3D Sonic game, and we'll actually be talking about those later on. But for Sonic 3D Classic Adventure, it's, it's okay. It could use a lot of work, and I hopefully it does get to that stage point. Emerald Ties. I cannot say good enough things about this game. This is truly a fan game that has a lot of heart and love with it. Awesome hand-drawn graphics, physics, physics that feel good, still gives a little bit of polish here and there, and overall good, great stage design. Now, while the initial first level, Sparkling Seaside, feels like a tried and true Green Hill level, you really feel the true characters game inside Relic Retreat Zone. The background of this level is astonishing to look at, the stage is well designed, and even though I couldn't get footage of it, because for some reason I couldn't find it during my recording playthrough, it made a new type of shield that I called the Tornado Shield. It honestly is anything like Peach's Hover from Mario 2, which gives Sonic the ability to slowly hover across the gap for a few seconds. Not really getting the height that Tails can get from constantly flying, but it's still a welcome new shield in this game. It's just awesome. I really did also love the finale of this, where you had to escape from a volcano, and eventually coming from the underground ruins to above ground was a beautiful touch. A later on level in this game known as Fuming Foundry, oh my goodness, it's awesome. It takes place in an active volcano, with you zooming in and out of the lava-filled tubes with quartz. It feels like Lava Wreath and Mystic Cave Zone had a baby, and I was also surprised to see that the Tornado Shield made a reappearance. I was a bit of a klutz when I was doing this, um, and only found one real issue with sticking on the stage. This was an overall solid demo. Three great zones to play through, beautiful graphics, original music. I would have loved to have seen a boss fight. I was actually a little surprised that most of these demos I played didn't really have a boss fight, but I am definitely keeping close tabs on this game, and I believe any other Sonic player really, really needs to. Uh, please, check out Emerald Tides when you get the chance. Green Hill Paradise Act 2 Final Mix. Now, the Final Mix is the special new add-on to, uh, to Green Hill Paradise Act 2 that has been getting a lot, and I mean a lot of awesome coverage as a very unique, true 3D fan game uh, using the very well-emulated GDK engine for Unreal. And I am not gonna lie, this is out of everything that's been made in GDK, this is still probably the key example of what you want to strive for. Open world gameplay, smooth, smooth transitions, uh, full on gamepad support, which is always a plus for these 3D titles, and momentum based gameplay. Something that a lot of the 3D Sonic games really tend to lack, and I'm even talking about the official ones by Sega, but this one, momentum, is definitely key. Sonic does stick occasionally, but if you really want to go up any kind of ramps or loops, you have got to make sure your momentum is there. Same if you ever want to like scale large obstacles, trail behind enemies, momentum is key, and god damn is this game well structured for a classic Sonic title. It's literally what would happen if you took the classic Sonic gameplay and threw it into a 3D environment. I would easily say this is probably the best Sonic 3D title I've played, uh, but it was recently overthrown by Sonic Utopia, which I am very happy to say was the early demo was released at Sage, so of course I'll be talking about Sonic Utopia. But literally, this and Utopia are the top 3D fan games you have to try out. If you're a Sonic fan, you really owe it to try these demos out. If you're a purist classic fan who has shunned the 3D titles, give these two a shot. I'll gush more about Utopia when we actually talk about it, but for now, Sonic Green Hill Paradise Act 2 Final Mix, just download it. Just, just download it. Uh, next up on our list is Sonic Neo Fighters. It's a game in the Mugen system, which means it is a very highly customizable uh, 2D fighting type fill that this actually uses sprites and I guess has a very robust type system. 
I'm honestly not too good at these type of fighting games. Um, I also had a difficult time as a game that boasts gamepad support, really mapping out any of my controls to my controller. So I just ended up having to use keyboard commands, and for the most part, it kind of worked. I just more or less found myself flailing about trying to take matches, and when I finally did win a match, it felt really, really good. But I can easily see and admit that really the Moogan system's not really for me, so I would probably have to give this game a pass. Uh, download this if you're a big fan of 2D-based fighters and want to give one shot in the Sonic universe. Not a bad idea. Go for it. Just not really the game for me. Project Spike Pig. It's... I will have to say first and foremost, if you're going to be playing this game, I would recommend playing it at full screen or turning up the uh, screen resolution because the initial resolution is a little too small for this title. I can also safe to say that I feel like the graphics are kind of competing with one another. Um, on certain stages, it just feels like the classic 16-bit sprites are kind of fighting with their Game Boy Advance almost looking like counterparts, leaving some things a little bit clustered. I do love the fact that each of the individual characters between Sonic, Tails, and Knuckles each have their own individual moves, which is great, uh, but I really feel like this game could have ditched the boost bar. Um, right above the star counter, which is kind of for finding the red rings in the zone, since I guess that's how every Sonic game needs to be nowadays? But it's a boost bar, and just like in the other Sonic titles, you hold down the boost button, it causes your hair to go faster, which also incurs with frame rate issues, which is a little bit disheartening. I do enjoy the concept of these levels. It, they are varied. They are very varied levels, and I love and appreciate that. But there are some bits that the level design just feels kind of ex like poorly executed. I love seeing the fact that we have a Marina stage again. It's been, geez, since Knuckles Chaotix on the Sega, um, Sonic, wow, geez, Sega 32X that we've seen in Marina Zone. And it's great. My biggest issue right now is music-wise. It sounds like Tropical Trance uses its own original music, but the second you get to Shiver Square and onward, it's just reused music from the games. I don't mind that, but when you have original music followed by music taken from the games, it just feels a little... I don't know. I, I love it when people make their own original music, and don't get me wrong, the music they chose for these stages from the games, they fit the environment and theme, just would have liked to have seen some more original work. There are some mechanics here and there that do work incredibly well, and there's sometimes that they just need a little bit more polish, and I feel like with polish and more development, Project Spike Pig definitely has a place in my book. I am probably going to end up waiting for a full release before checking this game out again. Sonic Project Time. It's, uh, definitely a short one-act, yeah, one-act concept. It's honestly not too bad, and I do like the fact that the developer fully said, yeah, you know, this is really on the short side, but I want to get this, I want to get some sort of proof of concept out, which I do actually really appreciate. Um, it's... It's a really odd one. This has a combination of sprites ripped from the game, on top, um, mainly from Sonic 3, on top of hand-drawn sprites, and it just comes out as clashing altogether. It's... I, it just clashes for me. It's really cool that it's its own unique take on it, but I do feel like the HUD is way, way too big. I've never really seen a HUD take up that much space in the corner of a Sonic game, and it just feels really out of place. Now, the cool thing about this, this game has really good ending credit music that was an original composition, and I would have loved to have heard this song play throughout the entire demo stage instead of, the, instead of Rusty Ruin from Sonic 3D Blast. I hope this guy keeps up with this project. The guy has shown love and dedication, has an original composer, we seem to get everything else hooked up and synced. Um, then we'll definitely see how Project Time goes along. But for now, I will have to say, just simply skip this game. As it stands, I could always use a, um, uh, oh, Guilty Pleasure game to play, and Shadow Rising Revengeing. 
is a mouthful of a title, but is also easily my guilty pleasure game from Sage this year. It is described as an alternate view of the events of Shadow the Hedgehog, but really quickly turns into a parody of Metal Gear Rising Revengeance, which also happens to run off of a Super Contra fan engine. It's Contra! That makes fun of Metal Gear from cutscenes all the way down to the game over screen. My mouth was literally open the entire time playing this game, mainly because it's Contra. I love Contra. I'm playing a Shadow the Hedgehog Contra fan game, and it's working. It's working incredibly well. I had a small hiccup that if you end up dying away from the center of the screen, you kind of need to return to the center in order for the stage to continue to scroll. But if you're a fan of Contra or a Shadow the Hedgehog fan, just just download this because it's, yeah, it's great. Just, it's great. Sonic Adventure 3. I really don't know how I feel because we've, we've been there multiple times where people have claimed that they have made the next game that is worthy of the title of Sonic Adventure 3. Really, no offense to anyone who does this, I just, it always brings a very amount of uncertainty about when I find games that are titled like this. Now granted, this one is developed using the GDK engine, which for itself gives a lot to those who use Unreal. It's it's probably one of the best way to make Sonic 3D, 3D games nowadays, which is a lot better than what we had in the beginning. But, this game still has its issues, mainly because it's really beautiful seeing a sunset appearance of Green Hill Zone. It's beautiful, don't get me wrong, but it gets to the point where the shadow play really makes it hard for me to determine where I need to go next. Um, there's also areas they can easily get over walls, and sometimes I don't know if I'm actually going the right way or not, where I feel like I've skipped like entire sections of a level. But what really gets me is there's a boss fight. There's a boss fight at the end of it, which in all fairness should be pretty cool. But it just felt like a tedious choice. It's a fight against Metal Sonic, which it's one of the giant things that everybody likes seeing. Sonic vs. Metal Sonic. It's it's just it's it's encoded into our DNA. But he doesn't really move. He just kind of stands in the center of the arena, and every single time you hit one of these golden springs, you do damage, which then he'll launch a volley of attacks that don't really go anywhere. So the boss fight just turns into kind of a mundane task of looking for these springs and hitting him. But what really baffles me is after you land the final hit, you then chase him up a hillside, and it just kind of ends right there. The, the boss fight doesn't continue, He's at a location that I don't know if he's supposed to be dropping down or not. It just sort of ends. I like no goal ring, no nothing, no ending cutscene. You're just kind of left to wonder on your own devices in which I got bored, found my way out of bounds, and kind of jumped to my death. I, I, I just don't know. I don't know if something happened, but really, it's a good attempt at a 3D game. I, I hope they do well. It has floating issues. But if you want to see a game that does the GDK engine done right, please check out Green Hill Paradise Act 2 Final Mix. Sonic and Friends 2. Never thought I'd see this game again. I really remember playing this back at Sage 2011, and I was actually kind of curious to see how long it has come since then. Um, from the bit I played, it does have very good level environments, really absurd amount of hidden collectibles, and special stage rings. The special stages are kind of interesting. It definitely has a big ring gap, but it does give you plenty of rings to justify the amount of ring uh, rings needed to get the emeralds. I will say one thing though, the stages, especially the very first act, feel like a labyrinth at times where you really don't have any clear indication of going. Now it is awesome to have a focus on exploration, but I do feel like every now and then there should be like a small indication of, hey, you really should be going this way. Whether it's a trail of rings, um, enemies, or maybe even a little signpost. But it's still pretty cool that this game has come a long way since, jeez, 2011. I would recommend checking it out. It's definitely good to see this kind of stuff back from what I remember when Sage was first a thing.